Today I'll be unboxing and building the new Portico 75 mechanical keyboard from the Keydot company. They sent me a lavender build kit to review and they even included a preview of their new branded packaging. The box looks so minimal and sleek and it would be helpful if you all could share your opinion on what you think of it, but just know that if you order this keyboard kit you'll receive the normal packaging until they release these in the future. The Portico 75 kit itself comes in a nice protective carrying case and inside you'll find the case and all of the components needed to build this keyboard. You'll only need to add your own switches and keycaps. It's considered an entry-level keyboard and features a compact 75% layout with a rotary encoder knob. This keyboard case is made of polycarbonate and it comes with a hot swap PCB with in-switch, RGB, and underglow. The case color I chose is wonderful and it reminds me of the 90s see-through electronics that were really popular. I just want to quickly note that my Keydot Company code for 5% off will not work for this keyboard kit, but you'll be able to use my code MOCHI on other select items from their website. I'll be sure to list everything down below. In the top compartment of the carrying case, I found a C3 equals B3 stabilizer kit with black housings and silver wires. It also comes with a cute baggie full of items such as a keycap puller, a screwdriver, gasket strips and rubber feet, a black USB-C cable, a Keydot Company switch puller, a hex key, and extra screws and standoffs. To begin the build, I put down my rose pink American Haptics work mat. I grabbed the case, turned it over, then used my wow stick electric screwdriver to remove all of the screws on the back to open up the case. I carefully turned it over, then removed the top layer of the case. The main thing I need is the PCB and the plate, so I pulled those layers out. In the bottom of the case, I found the silicone dampening mat and the connector for the daughter board. I put the case aside so that I can work on the PCB. I used the included hex key to loosen up the rotary knob because I can't pull the plate up without removing this first. It was very simple to remove and it shows how easy it is to replace the knob if you want to add your own custom one or alter this one. Next, I'll need to unscrew the screws that are in the standoffs. There are five in total. Removing these will allow me to access the PCB and from here, I can put the FR4 plate in the included felt dampening mat to the side as well. Like all of my builds, I'd like to test the PCB before I get started, just to make sure it's working correctly. I temporarily hooked up the PCB to the daughter board and plugged in the included USB-C cable into the USB port. Then I used my pink fine tip tweezers from Stationery Stash, opened up VIA, and tested each key by touching the tweezer tips to each hot swap socket. Since everything was working, I unplugged the PCB. While moving stuff around, I noticed that the standoffs were coming loose because the black screws are quite short. I went ahead and removed them so that I won't lose any, but I'm grateful that this kit comes with extras just in case. As I mentioned, this keyboard kit comes with a C3 equals B3 stabilizer kit. I opened it up and pulled out everything I needed, including all of the wires I'll be using. I'll need four pairs of housings and I'll also be adding the mods from the included Soulmate kit. I recently started using the V3 stabs in several of my builds and I really love how easy it is to customize them to your liking. For this Portico 75 build, I'll be applying the 0.1mm stab housing mats with my fine tip tweezers. These are cut perfectly and will match the size of the holes where the housings will sit. The kit comes with stem landing mats as well in three thicknesses, so I chose the 0.3mm version. I applied them the same way. I've tried the different thicknesses with other builds and the thicker ones have been my favorite so far. They help to dampen the sound of the sliders hitting the PCB. Here's how it looks so far. The last mod I'll be applying to the housings are the Holy Mod mats. It comes with Teflon strips and Poron strips and the Teflon is easier to apply and sound best to me. These are a little tedious to apply but using fine tip tweezers like these help a lot. Now it's time to lube the housings and stems using Crytox 205G0 in my Kinetic Labs palette. I'll also be using a brush from the Switch Keys brush kit on the Key.Company's Company's website. I also went ahead and assembled all the stabilizers because I'll be lubing the wires later on with my grease syringe kit. Here's what the completed stabilizers look like. 
The final mod from the Soulmate kit will be the wire dampening mats to help dampen the sound of the wires. I use my tweezers to place them underneath in the center where the wires will sit on the PCB. Because the spacebar is a lot longer than the other stabilizers, I use two pads on either side. The stabilizers are now ready to be screwed into the PCB, so I open up the packets containing the washers and screws. Installing these B3 stabs is pretty standard, and I use my wow stick to help me out, which made the process a lot faster. For lubing the wires, I brought out my stabilizer grease syringe kit from the Kida company, which you can see more info about by visiting the link down below. Using the syringe, I applied the grease to the wires and used the stem holder to help me move the stabilizer grease around. I inserted four switches that I'll be using for this build, then added four keycaps so that I can test out how the stabs feel. From here, I can adjust as needed. Once I'm happy with it, I just remove them. The PCB is basically ready for the switches, but it needs to go back into the case first. I re-added all of the standoffs, placed the felt mat back on, then the plate. I screwed everything back into place to secure it together. I brought my case onto the work mat, opened it up, and hooked the PCB back up with the daughter board. I carefully laid the PCB on top, then I reinstalled the rotary knob, securing that as well. I placed the top of the case back on, flipped the keyboard over, and finally closed everything up with my wow stick. While the keyboard is still flipped over, I went ahead and added the rubber feet. I love how these feet feel and the frosted look matches the case well. Because the main assembly of the case is complete, I'll now be removing my work mat so that I can add switches and keycaps. I know I mentioned this case color several times already, but I can't get over how great the shade of lavender is. It's going to perfectly complement the switches and keycaps for this build, which you'll see shortly. For this build, I'll be going with the Keydot Company's C3 equals Banana Split Linear Switches. They sent me some extra ones to add to my collection, and I noticed that they would match really well with the case, so I decided to pair it with this project. I lubed them with Crytox 205G0, and I also applied C3 equals film to each switch. I'll be using 79 switches in total for this Portico 75 build. As mentioned, this keyboard features a hot swap PCB, so no soldering will be needed. This part of the process is pretty standard, but I do want to note that I did have to add some extra pressure to the switches on the top three rows to get them to sit correctly. After adding all the switches, I plug in the USB cable and I open up VIA again to test each switch. If I find that any of them aren't working, I usually just unplug the keyboard, remove the switch, and either fix the bent pin or replace the switch. I'm very excited to complete the build and I just want to give my thoughts so far for this Portico 75 keyboard kit. Last year, I built the 65% Portico and the process is definitely similar. It really is such an easy build to get through and it's definitely perfect for anyone who wants to get into the mechanical keyboard hobby. The main differences between this build process and the 65% build process is the added steps for the rotary knob and the hooking up of the PCB and daughter board. These aren't complicated to do though, and both are good learning experiences because you'll likely come across these things again in other builds. For keycaps, I'll be using nice PVT elderberry that I purchased from Canon Keys. This keycap set is such a perfect set to pair with the Lavender Portico 75. It features a cherry profile with, with die sub PVT alphas and reverse die sub PVT mods. It also contains all the sizes needed for various keys specific to the layout we're working with, such as the 1.75 unit right shift key and 1.5 unit right function and control keys. Before I apply the keycap set, I'll be adding some artisans from Capsmiths. I went with two keycaps from their succulent collection and one from their rose collection. As I add the keycap set, I'm starting to finally get a feel of what the end result will look like, and I'm really happy with the aesthetic choices I made for this build. I highly vouch for the lavender color option on the product page, but the Portico 75 also comes in clear, smoke, and blue. This keyboard kit will be released on the Key.Company's Company's website tomorrow on Friday, March 4th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and each one will cost about $139 USD. Remember that the kit doesn't come with keycaps or switches, but make sure to check out their website because they do have some pretty awesome key sets and switches in stock right now. 
Now the keyboard is done and here's how it looks. I honestly didn't expect how blown away I'd be about the final result and taking photos of the keyboard was super enjoyable to do too. I'm using natural light for my photos and I love how the polycarbonate case looks with the sunlight coming through from my window. Aesthetics aside, the sound and feel of this keyboard is pretty well-rounded and it feels nice and sturdy to type on. The gasket mounted plate does add some nice cushion to the experience and I always enjoy keyboards with an added silicone dampening mat. It took me about an hour to fully build this keyboard, not including the extra steps I took to show detailed shots on camera, and the Keydot company does estimate that this project will take about 60 to 90 minutes on average. I really do think it's a great kit to go for if you are new to this hobby and at the end you'll have a pretty decent keyboard and will have an idea of how fun it is to build one. I mentioned it in the video earlier, but my only main issue was having to add extra pressure when adding my switches to the top three rows. Aside from that, the build is pretty straightforward. I didn't have any tolerance issues between the case and the keycaps and I had a blast putting it together. I also want to note that when I work on a keyboard with a plastic case, I can sometimes hear it creaking while assembling or holding it, but thankfully that's not something I've experienced with this kit. Overall, I very much recommend checking out this kit, whether you are a beginner or someone who's already built keyboards before. It's such a fun little project and I'm glad to see such vivid case color options like the lavender and blue. I'll leave a link to the product page down below, but these won't be available until tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to mark your calendars and set your alarms. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I have another purple themed build coming up soon and another overview, and I can't wait to share my process for each. Thank you again to the Keydot Company for sending the Portico 75 out for review, and thank you all for watching.